Hi, this is Gilles Lee, Radio Prepper, with an exciting kit uh, I'm building this weekend, the True SDX. Uh, this is just uh, the 3D uh, printed case. It's made of PLA Plus, and here are all the parts. It took me a while to print it. I made a <laughs> black faceplate, and the rest is uh, orange. So this radio is very interesting on paper. It's a five band transceiver, so 20, 30, 40, 60, and 80 meters, and SSB, so USB, LSB, AM, FM, and CW. And that is absolutely incredible for a radio that size. This would make the perfect prepping radio for sure because it's so small, low current consumption, not a whole lot of power, but really it's not really needed. And you, know, you can use it for digital modes, CW, everything, voice modes, uh, it just has everything. But I was and I'm still a little bit worried about this radio because it's fairly new. There has been problems and uh, to me, it did seem to be a little bit of a hack. Now, I might be totally wrong about this. It's just the impression that I got. The kit is uh, made by uh, more than one manufacturer, actually. The uh, developer of the radio is DL2MAN in Germany. And he has some, uh, uh, he does approve basically uh, a few manufacturers. The one I chose, I bought the kit from AliExpress. I'll put all those links in the description. And I got the kit in a nice little plastic box, which is great for shipping because it's not gonna get crushed. So let's look at uh, what's inside the box. I'm not going to call this an unboxing video because I don't really like unboxing videos, but Let's look at uh, the contents. So we have uh, the components and actually I'll open this bag. I haven't opened it yet, so it's all new to me. And let's look at what's in there. We have relays for band switching and probably filter switching as well. No idea what that is. That either, I'll look at that later. Wire for the toroids. They, there is a bunch of toroids that you have to wind because, of course, those are not pre-populated on the board. All the surface mount components are already on the board, so it should be a fairly easy kit to build. And what we have here is mostly toroids and hardware. There is a list of those toroids with the number of turns that uh, it, they require. Along with, uh, there is a speaker, so that's great. I really like that. And... You can get all the instructions on dl2man.de. From what I can see, the uh, PCBs look very good. They're a nice blue color with very nice lettering. And as you can see here, the surface mount components are already on the board, so you won't have to uh, go through the pain of soldering them. Here is the second board, so there are two boards. So that little gizmo here is the OLED screen, so that should be a very nice screen. And the other plastic box has the speaker in it. I have to admit, I am a little bit apprehensive about this build. It should be pretty straightforward, but newer kits with the microprocessors and lots of integrated circuits are not easy to troubleshoot. So if everything goes well, I should have an awesome radio very soon. If not, it's just going to be a pain. And that's not particular to the true SDX, but of all the newer models that, you know, come out now. I'm really hoping it's going to work because this would make an awesome prepping radio. And that small with uh, SSB, CW and digital modes, that's absolutely incredible. You know, low uh, power consumption once again. It has a built-in speaker. Uh, I think it does have a built-in microphone and a built-in Morse key, so you could almost use it as a handheld. Except for the uh, toroids, uh, there isn't much to it really. Uh, relays, connectors, buttons, and uh, that's about it. By the way, I'm using a flux pen. That's uh, It really helps for soldering on the uh, very small uh, soldering pads. 
by the way, uh, DL2MAN has a very good video on DL2MAN.DE for the construction, so I'm not going to uh, remake that video, there's no point. I'll show you uh, the things that I think are important. So I'm just following the video, I'm going to start with uh, simply putting the, uh, the obvious components on the boards. The uh, OLED screen, you have to do a little modification, you have to add a wire and remove a couple capacitor which is pretty easy. Um, for that I use uh, silicone insulated wire, that's all I use anymore, that's from uh, drones, building drones, and uh, the reason being that the uh, insulation doesn't retract when you heat up the wire, so uh, once you cut your insulation on the wire, you can solder it, it's not going to retract and leave an exposed uh, piece of wire basically. I had to redo it a couple of times. Make sure you tug on the wire a little bit after soldering to make sure that it's not going to come off. So a little bit of precision work here, but yeah, it's just slowing me down a little bit. All right, I had to immobilize the part I'm working on here because it was just sliding on the desk. I know they make tools for that, but I just don't have one. The manual is very clear as to what to do here, so there's no doubt. I have a problem with my soldering iron. I think it's it's not getting hot enough anymore. Fortunately, I have a second one. This uh, Hako station has been serving me for years, but now I have to put it all the way to 480, that's Celsius, to be able to solder. And something is wrong, either with this part, the soldering iron tip, the resistor maybe, or somewhere in the electronics, maybe the connector, I'm not sure, but something is going on here. I'm not getting enough heat. All right, first stupid, stupid mistake, and I can't believe I did this. I've been making a lot of mistakes lately. I don't know what's going on with me, but you can see here that the button should be, of course, on this side. And I soldered it on the wrong side. Ah, uh, so I'm going to use some uh, copper uh, here, the wick, to uh, unsolder this. It does work, but it's going to be a pain because, of course, there are three, uh, five, six, seven pins here, and uh, it's not going to be easy. I'll tell you, getting old really sucks. That's how you do it, and the copper will uh, just basically soak up the uh, the solder. And it does work pretty well, but still, it's you know I still have to remove that, so I'm easily going to lose half an hour doing this. I'm already up uh, 15 minutes. Whoops. So what I'm going to do here is uh, wiggle the pins a little bit. I removed as much solder as I could, but it's still sticking a little, so it's very easy to lift a pad off the board and uh, that would be catastrophic, of course, so that would be the end of the kit. All right, that wasn't easy. I didn't damage anything, I believe, so oh, that, that was so, so dumb. I think those uh, spacer are for the uh, OLED screen, so I'm going to use them here. There are some nylon uh, nuts there. And the logic board is finished, uh, complete with the screen. So now I have to tackle the uh, RF board and <laughs> that's going to be longer because of course all the storage that I have to wind and the, the few transformers. I have to say though, uh, if this board is as easy to do as the other one, I'm going to buy a second one because uh, this turns out to be uh, great. Very easy to build for the logic board. Now. Aside from the toroids, well, there are, you know, the output transistors here, uh, the BC-170, I believe. So many of my radios use those. I'm going to have to buy a bunch of them just as spares. Uh, the relays and uh, well, toroids, transformers, and that's about it. I'm moving pretty fast here. It turns out to be fairly easy. So I remember from the Aircraft T1 manual, which is a tuner, that for the relays, you're not supposed to cut to snip the uh, the leads of the relays because it can mechanically damage the relays. Uh, just the snapping of those leads uh, can cause problems. So I'm not going to cut them. I'm going to lift them like this if I can. They are fairly uh, a little bit long. So we'll see if that causes trouble or not. I'm on my last toroid here, L15. But before I'm going to solder that on, I'm going to verify that the way I wind these toroids is going to be compatible with the pads here for the transformers. So I'm just going to check and it looks like I'm going to have to uh, wind them the other way around probably. 
by the way, this is what I have left. So, you know, you could mess up one or two toroids maybe and have enough wires to redo it. Weird thing is, I have three extra T37-2 toroids, but I really don't see where those could go. And I think they're just extras. There was also an extra button and, you know, good to have a spare. I managed not to uh, mess up the transformers, so they are one the right way. Now the only thing that I have left to do is to put the one turn here between the two pads in the center. One here and one on this one. And I'll be done with the build. Just a connector here to add on that side. But that's it. One bad surprise. The power connector. It's a very tiny power connector. And I thought the one I had for my Weber MTR would work. It doesn't. I don't have one. Fortunately, for now, for testing, I can use the USB connector. I just plugged in my power bank and, well, at least the uh, OLED screen works. Maybe if I turn the... Yeah, okay, well, good sign. It works, guys. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I haven't closed the case yet. I don't have the screws long enough. The sound's a little bit thin, but it's not in the case. Probably will work better with... Uh, earphones are a bigger speaker but it has the merit to be there I have a weird noise on 40 meters not on the other bands I don't know why actually it's in LSB I don't have any weird noise in USB which is really bizarre all right I just had too much gain that's all that's the reason the speaker is not very loud but it's plenty enough I'm going to check the output power using uh, the uh, USB uh, power pack, so uh, that's only 5 volts, that's not going to output much, but let's give it a shot. Oh. Alright, so 400 milliwatts maximum. 400 milliwatts isn't bad, I mean in CW that would work just fine, but uh, of course it's going to be much more with a 12 volt power supply, but unfortunately I don't have that connector, I have to order one. I need 35 millimeter uh, screws, I mean bolts, M3 by 35 and uh, I can, uh, I'll be able to close the box. Unfortunately it's Sunday today so I won't be able to do it. But man, this is awesome! This is Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee QRP. Foxtrot 4 Whiskey Bravo Yankee QRP. It's uh, receiving perfectly fine in CW. The uh, decoder is working fine. Uh, it's transmitting. I got a report on the uh, reverse beacon network. So excellent. And all that on USB uh, <laughs> with a USB power pack uh, as a power supply. So unbelievable. Why was I apprehensive about this kit? I don't know because it's an awesome radio and it, it has everything. Five bands. Uh, five to seven watts, all modes, tiny, tiny radio, works on USB power. It's awesome. And I'm going to buy another one. Two is one and one is none. So, and I, I really like it. It's, it's really good, very easy to build. So thank you very much, DL2MAN. You're awesome, man. You just made something that's absolutely great. Now, of course, I'm going to test this radio uh, further in the next video. I will do a little bit of tuning because it's a little bit off frequency and there might be some other things to tune like filters and, and things like that. So also I will uh, take it to the field and make real contacts because I got a couple reports, actually three reports on the uh, reverse beacon network on 40 and 30 meters, but I wasn't able to make a contact and I wasn't able to make a uh, LSB contact on 40 meters. I heard the uh, famous station, uh, Petra, um, something PIA, I forgot her call sign, but there was a pileup and of course with 300 milliwatts, there was no way I was going to make it through the pileup. But uh, I'm sure I potentially, I could make uh, US, I mean CW contacts, of course, uh, using USB power. 
probably even just a solar panel without a battery. So that's pretty awesome. On 12 volts, as soon as I get the uh, connector, I will have uh, full power and that should allow me to make any contact I want really. So I'm really looking forward to uh, testing this further and I'm sure you are too. So until next time, have a good one.